Um, t- tonight I want to talk about something. I want to talk about water. You know, water is a theme that's it, it's through the Bible, through the whole Bible from the beginning um, until the end. Uh, it, you know, you start in Genesis. In Genesis chapter 2, it talks about the, the river that runs through the Garden of Eden, the, the, the water of the Garden. And you get clear to the end uh, of the Bible. You look in Revelation chapter 22. It's talking about um, the New Jerusalem. It's really talking about heaven there, obviously. And it uh, talks about the river of life that flowed uh, through the New Jerusalem. That they came down from, from the throne of, and, and from the Lamb. Um, so, you know, just from that passage alone, we, we understand that, that, this, that this river of life, this water of life, is, is truly Christ. Um, uh, God is referred to in Jeremiah as as um, living water as well. Um, the the uh, the song that we just sang a minute ago uh, about the deer pants for the water that is actually from uh, a passage in Psalms in Psalms chapter forty two. Uh, it says, as a deer pants for the, for the water brooks, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God, when I shall come and appear before God. You know, what we see here in this passage is, is the idea that we truly long for God. The, 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 the question is there, when are we going to get to see God? And, and the idea of, of this thirst. Um, I don't know if, if you guys have truly been thirsty before. Um, I don't know if I've truly been thirsty before, but, but you know, water is something that sustains us. And I've truly been scared about not having water before. Um, me and Steve and, and a couple of our boys, we, we went uh, on a backpacking trip. And uh, I just want to say for the record, Steve brought the mat. That's important to the story. <coughs> So we're, we're, we, have, we have a point where there's water. It's important for us to get to that so that we, you know, have water to drink and we can cook and, and, and so forth. Um, so so we, we're hiking. We find where this trail is supposed to be. It's not really there. So we look at the map. The map doesn't look like the signs. The signs don't look like the trail. We're, we're a little confused. We ask for help. <clears throat> I just want to, we ask for help for someone else's map. It didn't match anything that we had seen. Okay, we did have a GPS, but we had no cord. We had no, no map with cord uh, with the points on to where we knew where we were going. So we decided to go home. That, that's what we did. We went back. We had, we had we had our wives come pick us up, and, and we went out hiking the next day. But but the thing is, you know, we were so worried about where we're going to have water because water water is everything. If you look through the whole history of the Bible. Water is, is, is in everything because it's in our whole life. Uh, we, we can't sustain ourselves without water. The, the human body is made up two-thirds of water. Um, you know, we, we read the story that Jesus fasted for 40 days. 40, not, you know, 40 days in the wilderness. Was he okay? You know, uh, actually, Matthew says he fasted 40 days, then he became hungry. Mark was supposed to give me a sign if I'd been preaching too long because he's going to rub his tongue and tell me he was hungry. I don't think that's going to be 40 days. But, but the point is, you know, Jesus could survive 40 days without food. Uh, but what I found is that the human body, if you don't do anything, if you're just trying to survive, you can survive 5 to 10 days, depending on the temperature, without water. So water is, is truly vital to our life. It, it is our life source. Um, you know, all living things re- require water. Plants, animals, humans, everything requires water. Now let me say this, Carson, that is a general statement, okay? I, I don't want you to find one thing that doesn't require water and call me on that. He's my facts checker. Last time I, I, I talked on Wednesday, I, I said that the, um, that the Harlem Globetrotter was always won. I go up to, on the way to class, he says, you know, in 1976, the journals won one time. <laughs> How do I know that? Okay, he, he, he checks his facts better than me, obviously. But um, as, 
you know, everything requires water to live. Plants, humans, everything. Um, as we look at, 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 this, at this theme in the Bible, we see that, you know, miracles, uh, um, many of the miracles revolve around water. Uh, you see Jesus turn water into wine. You see, you see him calm the sea. Uh, you see him walk on water. Naaman dips in the Jordan seven times to be cleansed of his uh, leprosy. Um, and how about the five, you know, when Jesus feeds the 5,000, five loaves and two fishes? Don't think God drink something? That's, okay, maybe that wasn't funny, but. <clears throat> but, but you know, um, so today I, I want to talk about water and, and a few things about water. One thing that we see about water is, is salvation. Um, you know, physically, water does save our lives, and, and, and God uses these things that are, that are around us to, to get his point across. <clears throat> Consequently, um, God used water to save his children all through the Bible. Um, as we see in Exodus chapter 14, let's go over there for a minute. In Exodus chapter 14, we see as the Israelites leave um, Egypt, they come to the Red Sea. And if we look at verse 13, uh, I'm going to read 13 through 16. It says, But Moses said to the people, Do not fear. Stand by, the, stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see them again forever. The Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the sons of Israel to go forward. Um, as you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, the sons of Israel shall go through the midst of the sea on dry land. Now I want to drop down to verse 21. <clears throat> then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept back... Um, swept back to sea by a strong east wind all night and the sea and turned the sea into dry land so that the waters were divided. Now we're going to, uh, <clears throat> let's all drop on down. Um, let's drop down to verse 23. Then the Egyptians took up the pursuit and all Pharaoh's horses and his chariots and his horsemen went after them into the midst of the sea. And in the morning watch, the Lord looked down on the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud and brought the army of the Egyptians into confusion. He caused their chariot wheels to swerve and made them drive with difficulty. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from Israel, for the Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. Um, <clears throat> Okay, let's just continue. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the waters may come back over the Egyptians, over the chariots and the horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal state at daybreak, while the Egyptians were fleeing right into it. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen. Even Pharaoh's entire army had gone into the sea after them. Not even one of them remained. But the sons of Israel walked on dry land through the midst of the sea, and the waters were like a wall to them on the right and to the left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hands of the Egyptians and from the Israel. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. So <clears throat> what we see here is through this water, through the sea, Jesus, <clears throat> God saves the, the Israelites from the Egyptians. They, they were scared. They, were, they see the Egyptians coming after them. God takes care of them. They walk through on the dry land, and the, uh, the Egyptians are swallowed up in the, in the sea. Um, you know, God also saved Noah through the water. Uh, I think the... Uh, <clears throat> you know, as we think about Noah and the flood, what was Noah saved from? We, we, we know what the... We know what the Israelites were saved from. They were saved from the Egyptians. But, but what was Noah saved from? I think, I think the real answer is the corruption of the day. If we go back to Genesis chapter 6, 
<clears throat> we see that. Uh, if we look at Genesis chapter 6, verses 11 through 13, it says, Now the earth was corrupt in the sight of God, and the earth was filled with violence. God looked on the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all the flesh was corrupted their way upon the earth. Then God saw, said to Noah, The end of flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence because of them, and behold, I am about to destroy them with the earth. <clears throat> then God tells Noah to build the ark, how to do it, all that. Um, you know, the corruption of the world was all around Noah, yet he was uncorrupted. Um, God looked down on his people, he saved them. You know, this, this theme did not stop in the Old Testament. We see that today. Uh, if we go to 1 Peter chapter 4, this is a verse real familiar to us, I know. Uh, in, in 1 Peter chapter 4, if we look at That's 2 Peter. Oh. <laughs> okay, excuse me. Well, this is a little... Um, <clears throat> I have 1 Peter chapter 4, 18 through 22, but that's not correct. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm a little embarrassed. <clears throat> okay, um, start with verse 18 of chapter, uh, of chapter 3. I was only one chapter off. For Christ also died for the sons once for all, just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which... Also, he went and made proclamation to the spirit, now in prison, who once were disobedient when the patience of God kept waiting in the days of Noah during the construction of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through the water. Corresponding to that, baptism now saves you. Not the removal of the dirt from the flesh, but appeal to God for a good conscience. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is the right hand of of God, having gone into heaven after angels and authorities and powers had been subjected to him. <clears throat> Is it the water that saves us? Is it the water that saved Noah? Is it the water that saved the Israelites? I think verse 18 says that Jesus died for us take away our sins. Um, we see in Romans uh, uh, chapter 6 and verse 3 uh, that we're baptized into Christ. Galatians chapter 3, 27 says we clothe ourselves with Christ. It's not, the, it's not the water that saves us. It's the obedience. It's the getting into Christ that saves us. Just like it was the obedience that saved Noah. It was the obedience that saved um, the Israelites from, from the Egyptians. Did they have to do something? Did Noah have to do anything? I think, I think he spent 120 years preaching and building an ark. And then he had to get in. If he wouldn't have got in that ark, would it have saved him? He'd been drowned just like everybody else. Uh, what about the Israelites? Did they have to do anything? If, if, if remember back what we read in verse 15, what's God telling them to do? Go forward. Don't stand there and whine. Do something. You go forward. You be obedient to me. I'm going to take care of you. And that's the same thing uh, it is with us. It's, it's not the water that saves us. It's the obedience to God's plan. It's the obedience to God's um, instructions that is truly the Savior. It, 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 is, it is getting into Christ's blood that takes away our sin. Um, as the Israelites stand there, um, if we go back to Exodus chapter uh, 14, if you look at verse 13... It says that, it says, don't be, um, it says, don't fear, 
Stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which will accomplish you today. And the Egyptians you have seen today, you will never see them again forever. <clears throat> you know, that's the, way it is. that's the way it is with our sin when we're baptized. We never see it again forever. Um, isn't that a great blessing? I mean, I mean, you think about the things that you did in your past that Jesus' blood wipes away, that that that, that peace that we can have uh, because of that, that no matter what happens, we can know that we have salvation. And that salvation is in Jesus Christ and that His blood takes away all the wrongs we've done. <clears throat> you know, as we think about our theme of, uh, of water, um, you know, in, in, in our society, water not only is something that we use to sustain ourselves, but it's something that, that, that's peaceful. Isn't it? I mean, why do people go to the lakes and, and the streams and the rivers? Because it's peaceful there. Why, you know, why do we have fountains? Why, why do we have these little uh, fountains that go in your house with this little sound of running water? Be, be, because the sound of running water is peaceful, right? Well, well that's the way it is, you know, w w with Christ. The, 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 this... This, this water of baptism that, that, we, that we get into Christ through um, gives us peace because we have no more sin. You know, as, as, we, as we get our salvation through water, um, there, there's something else that I want us to think about. It is that in, in John, let's, let's go to the book of John and look at chapter 4. This is going to be, hopefully, hopefully this should be the story of the, 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 the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman that Jesus talks to. And, um, you know, Jesus is on a journey. He comes, uh, he's tired, he's thirsty, so he sits down at Jacob's well to have a drink. And here's a Samaritan woman that nobody wants to deal with because her life isn't right. She's a woman. She's a Samaritan. All these reasons Jesus shouldn't talk to her, but he does. <clears throat> and um, in verse 11, she says, <clears throat> well, actually, verse 10, Jesus says, um, If you knew the gift of God and who it was who said you give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. And she said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get this living water? What is she wanting? She's thinking this living water. <clears throat> Jesus is going to go on to talk to her about, um, if, if you look at verse 15, she said, The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty, nor have to come all the way here to draw. What's she thinking about? She's thinking about herself. She's being truly selfish at this point and saying, man, you know, uh, the, the, these women, they had to go all the way outside the city to where this well was generally. More than once, a, they had to go there twice a day, get this water. It was a lot of work. She's like, man, if you can take off all this work from me, I'm all in. Right? That, that, that's what she wants to hear. She wants to get someone who's going to relieve this work from her. Um, you know... <clears throat> But what Jesus is talking about, he's talking about that he's the salvation. But what I want us to look at here for a second is the fact that, you know, truly, Jesus does come here to try to make it easier on us. If we follow after him, isn't it easier? You know, I want you to listen to this for a second and tell me what this is. Isn't that a commercial? Right? That's what, that's what the pop companies tell us that true uh, refreshment sounds like. Right? They tell us that, 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 that man, you drink this pop, you're going to be you're going to be all refreshed, you're going to be ready to go. It does all this great stuff for you. The reality of it is, it takes 32 glasses of water to, to to uh, what, what am I trying to say? Counteract the acid is in one can of pop. Thirty-two glasses of water. True refreshment. Um, 
You know, water, it, I found some facts about water. It said five glasses of water a day. Um, if you drink five glasses of water a day, you're 45% less likely to get colon cancer. That you're 79% less likely to get breast cancer. 50% less likely to get bladder cancer. Um, lack of water, number one cause of fatigue. I know that to be true. I start working sometimes, you just keep working, and come home, my wife knows. Um, it says that 80% of the people, uh, if, they, if they're hydrated properly, feel less pain in their joints. Um, it, it, also, we know that, that proper hydration ha, uh, helps reduce uh, kidney stones and, and things like this. The point I want to make is, you know, we look at a glass of water, which I thought was going to be right here. See this glass of water? <clears throat> you, look at, you look at a glass of water, and sometimes we say, that's not very, you know, that's not very exciting. But this, but this can of pop, man, that's exciting. Isn't that, you know, and, and the world does the same thing with us uh, about Christianity, about truly falling after Christ. In Christ, once we're in Christ through, through baptism, we have to go back to the well time after time to get refreshed. Else we're never going to get that. We may survive, we may make it through, but we're never going to have that, that fullness of life um, like we would if we were truly hydrated. I want to tell you a story. Um, uh, a story of a woman named Lisa. She lived in Colorado, and she was a, she was a runner. She liked to run. And uh, she had a favorite spot that she ran. She ran up this mountain um, to this park. And she'd come up through the mountains, and, and, and it would be this big clearing that was, that was this beautiful park. She liked to go there and, and, and think and, and enjoy run and, and, and so forth. But there had been, uh, there had been some reports of uh, uh, this, this guy exposing himself to people and, and that some, some women had been attacked. So they were saying, you know, don't go up there alone. Just don't go there. Um, they, they were really discouraging women from going there. One day she decides, you know, it was a little bit cooler. She decides no one was going to be there but her. She's going to go on this run because she really wanted to run up there. So she runs. Um, she runs up to the top of her mountain. She gets into that clearing. And standing off to the side is this naked man. And she thinks, oh, man, all this was correct. So in her mind, she goes through things that she heard. She, you know, she says, man, I heard, uh, I've heard that these guys are generally cowards. And, and, and you know, maybe if, I, maybe if I, I, I'm aggressive, maybe he'll run away. And, you know, I, I've heard that, that when you come across... Uh, bears and big gang, you know, you're supposed to have this deep voice, and you're supposed to be loud, you're supposed to raise your hands and, and, and make all this noise, and, and they'll run off. And she says, you know, and even so, I don't want to be running all the way down the mountain worrying about if he's behind me or not. So she decides she's doing something. So in her low voice, she runs after him and yells and waves her arms, and it works. The man starts running off, and then she realizes he has on a pair of blue running shorts. That he wasn't this evil man that she perceived him to be, but because of the preconceived notions that she had and the things that society had told her, she knew that this guy was out to get her. <clears throat> um, she said that she only imagined that this guy runs off to the newspapers and said, it's a woman, not a man. <laughs> but, you know, the point is, the point is sometimes society sells us something and, and, and we see things that aren't really true. We look at, at what Christ is trying to give to us, the, the, the life that Christ really wants us to have, and we say, you know, it's not very appealing sometimes. That, that, that I'm selfish, that I want the things that the world tells me are fun. You know, Willis talked about some of that this morning. Um, 
the world is trying to sell us something that's not true. But what can we do to, 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 to keep this from happening? We've got to go back to the source. We've got to go back to that well. We've got to go back to Christ time after time. Um, in, in, in Matthew chapter 4, um, this, is, this is a story of, of uh, this is a story of, uh, of when, when uh, Jesus walks out uh, to the boat and he sees his disciples and, and, and he tells and, and Jesus said, or, or Peter says, you know, if you're, if you're Jesus, you command me to come out and I'm going to. And what happens? He comes out. Things are all great. If his eyes are focused upon Jesus, when he's looking at Jesus, he's good. Then he looks around and figures out these big waves and the, the wind and the storm's all there. And what's he doing out of the boat? What happens to him? He sinks. You know, we have to keep, we have to keep our focus upon Christ. We, we can't um, <clears throat> deviate from that. That's what we're going to let the world's thinking come into us. And we're never going to be fully happy and complete as we can be. Um, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, I, I want to read this. It says, And do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, what is good and acceptable and perfect. How are we supposed to be transformed? By the renewing of our mind. What is That's a constant act, renewing. Continually going back and getting recharged. Continually coming together. Continually being in the Word. And more importantly, folks, continually to do something. I don't know about you, but I come, I come together with you guys, and I'm bulletproof. You know, when I'm here, man, I'm going to go set the world on fire. I'm going to be this great Christian. And then I go home, and somebody turns the TV on, and life starts. We can't continue um, to listen to the world for what is good. God has told us how to be complete. Uh, Paul said that he buffeted his body daily, that, that, he, that he made his body his slave. That, that day by day, that this is, a, this is a, 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 a conscious effort that he's making to make sure his body is doing what his mind wants it to do. I don't know about you, but, 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 I, but I get that. How many of you guys, when you get home from work, you, you, you got plans of doing these great things, you get home from work, and guess what? You're tired. Your body says, I don't want to. What do we do? Do we sit down? Or do we know, do what we know to be right? Um, you know, the things that Jesus calls us to do only make us happy. We, we think of all the things that, that, that are tough. Love your enemies. You know, uh, uh, what, does that, what does that get us? When we refuse to allow these negative energy to be in us, aren't we happier? When we, when we hate, when we have this hatred in us, does that only not bring us down? Everything that God's asking us to do is to make us complete, is to make us happy, and we're fighting against Him. So, the, the point of what I'm trying to make here is that if we're truly going to be satisfied, if we're truly going to have a satisfied life, right now we have to stay close to Christ we have to do something different than we did yesterday we can't go down the same path and be lazy and be complete um, I, I want to bring up one more thing uh, 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 about about this water and, and, and that is this water that saved God's people the water that saved Noah, or, 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 or the water that, through, or that Noah was saved through the water, and, and that the, the Israelites were saved through the water, and, and through the water of baptism were saved. What happened to the people that weren't God's people from that water? What happened to the people that weren't Noah 
that weren't in the ark in the flood. They're dead. What happened to the Israelites? Dead. What's going to happen? By the same water that saves is also going to be the same water that condemns. You know, um, Jesus was referring to himself truly as a living water in, in John. Uh, and in Matthew chapter 7, it talks about um, people on the day of judgment are going to come to him. And it says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will end the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Now many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. The same, the same Savior that we have is the one here who is going to say, I never knew you to those who aren't in him. So tonight, here's where we're at. You know, we have the opportunity today to make change in our lives. I don't know if you've come to the point of salvation. Most of you I know that, I think. But, I, you know, there's things that we may need to change in our lives. Today we have the opportunity to do that. Um, God only wants us to have a fulfilled life while we're here and in the future. And that's only through Him. Um, so today we have the opportunity to come to Him, to, to give our life to Him, to get into this salvation uh, through the water of baptism, or to make changes in our life to become closer to Him. So if you have any needs, uh, please come as we stand and sing.